Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Split City DIY, and today I'm going to show you how to tech the halls with your own LED holiday matrix. Now, let's talk about what you're going to need. Uh, I'm using an Arduino Uno, or you can really use any microcontroller that supports um, the uh, various LED um, libraries that are out there. Uh, and then for LEDs, I'm using Mokungit brand um, light strands. I'm using two 50 LED strands tied up together here. Uh, now Mokunga is, I hope I'm saying that right by the way, uh, is an OME uh, distributor of LEDs on Amazon. I've had pretty good luck with them. Uh, I used another one of their strands uh, for the Stranger Things light wall that I did a video on and since they worked out and they're affordable, I decided to go with them for this project as well. Um, and then for hardware, that's all you need. I'm taking five volt power directly from the Arduino and then I'm using ground and the digital pin to control the lights and that's it. Now because 250 strand LEDs makes a total of 100, I'm doing a 10 by 10 square matrix. And I've just taped the LEDs in zigzagging columns onto this piece of foam core board uh, that you can get any sort of discount or craft store. I was able to get a two pack for about six bucks, I think. Um, and it ended up being the perfect mounting solution because the tape, I, if I want to use the lights again, I can just take them off. I mean, you could also hot glue or any sort of other adhesive, but if you want it to be so that you can take it apart easily afterwards, uh, I just recommend doing something simple like this. And where the LEDs are gonna be so bright, you're not gonna notice the tape or really anything else. And the white really makes the light pop out at you. So my goal with the project was to have a series of different scenes in the matrix ranging from random color displays to little pixel pictures and even um, being able to spell out messages with letters going across. And much like the LED light choice, I was inspired by the Stranger Things project and began setting up my code with the fast LED library using the Stranger Things code as basically a template. And this quickly uh, turned out to be not such a great idea. I was addressing each LED individually, and so that's a minimum of 100 lines of code for every single scene that I was trying to put in there. And by doing this, it was eating up a ton of flash storage on the Arduino. I actually couldn't fit everything I wanted to in a single script, and that was the first time since I started using Arduino that that was even became like a concern that I was thinking about, that I didn't have enough space to store my program. Uh, so I went back to the drawing board and revisited the Adafruit NeoPixel libraries, and that's when I found out that they actually have an additional LED library, and that's called the NeoMatrix library, and then they also have a dedicated GFX library that goes with that, which is meant to draw shapes and text on LCD screens, uh, but I was able to get to work with this matrix. And speaking of code, let's go ahead and take a look at the Arduino IDE to see what we're working with. I tried to format this code neatly so that it would be easy to understand and also be streamlined since program storage has been such an issue in my first attempt. I'll also be posting this in my GitHub for download and we'll link that below. Since the GFX library uses 16-bit variables for color, I defined all the colors that I needed at the beginning so that I could use the color names to call throughout the functions. I got the code from a 16-bit color generator, which I will link below. Then I set up the code to recognize my LEDs as both a strip and as a matrix. I did this because I'm using functions from both libraries and I was happy to see that the compiler didn't get mad at the digital pin being used twice in my sourcing because, um, you know, the Arduino ID has feelings now and I wouldn't want to offend it. Um, but your matrix declaration uh, right here will vary depending on how your matrix is configured physically with your lights, whether it be a true hardware matrix or a DIY one like I'm using. I had to play around with mine a bit to get everything to look good, so it's just a matter of trial and error. The setup portion is pretty basic, so let's jump into the loop where all the action is. I decided to write functions outside of the loop to then call them later. This is taking a page from the Adafruit NeoPixel and Fast LED library example codes that I've been studying a lot lately. It just makes the whole thing a lot less clunky. So for designs, I have a Christmas tree, the letters you would find on a dreidel outside of Israel, aka Nun, Gimel, He, and Shin, 
and some mini candy canes. I also have some color designs. I used the Theater Chase example um, from the Neo Pixel Library to run red, green, blue, and yellow versions in between um, the more pixel art scenes. And then the last portion involves sending up individual letters to spell out Happy Holidays using the text writing syntax from the GFX library. Because this is all in the loop, it will display infinitely in the order that I have the functions listed. I did add a short delay along with matrix.clear after every function because otherwise without calling for clear, the lights were crashing into each other and basically not clearing out. So like the tree would be left behind when we went to the dreidel ones and it was just, it was rough. So uh, definitely recommend putting in matrix clear just to kind of reset everything. Now for the functions themselves, I've done a lot of commenting um, on the side, so I won't go um, into too much detail there. Um, again, I will have this posted and linked below on my GitHub so you can download the code yourself. But one thing I did want to point out is that you'll see I used the draw uh, rectangle syntax uh, to draw in backgrounds for all the design functions. I did this because the fill screen command as well as the fill rectangle command would cover any other LEDs I would try to call. So notice I'm calling the fill triangle later and also a draw pixel. Those wouldn't show up otherwise. I found it helpful to literally think of it as drawing when you're designing your matrix. Um, I use the same technique for the text functions as well. If we go down here, you'll see I use the draw line function to act as the rectangle to kind of fill in the gaps because the set text color command does allow for the background color, um, but it's only around the immediate area of the letter um, and you'll see I've commented that here um, this first color listed is the color of the letter and the second one is the background that basically fills in the, the gaps around the immediate portion of the letter but the rest otherwise is blank and now one more coding caveat you'll notice I have two lines of code let me get to them Doop -doo. two lines of code that say uh, make dot set rotation followed by a number. I have it there and then I have it down here right before we call the happy holidays function. Um, and this rotates the matrix so that it's acting like the LEDs have been turned in 90 degree increments up to 360 degrees where zero is calling for 90 degrees, one is calling for 180, etc. Uh, I had to do this to get the text to be oriented in the right way otherwise it was mirrored now after playing around with declaring the matrix in different orientations as i talked about earlier up here um, setting the rotation for both the text and other functions was the easiest solution um, basically setting up in this way and then calling the rotation for um, 270 degrees and then down here at 180 degrees was uh, really the only way i could get everything to kind of work and be oriented properly um, it's really handy to have this option uh, in the GFX library since it's very easy to mess up your coordinates and rotating could save you a lot of work. Um, my guess is that the text was showing up mirrored for me because I'm not using an LCD hardware display, which this library is optimized for. And from my searches online, it seems like a lot of people updated their LCDs library in the IDE um, and that would take care of any mirroring issues. And obviously this wasn't an option for me. So overall, once you get the hang of the GFX and Neo Matrix libraries, they're really simple and intuitive to use. Um, I find when working with new hardware or libraries, the syntax is always my biggest barrier, but hopefully my comments and this video can help you out with that. The code is also a lot lighter as I was able to fit all those functions in using only 54% of the program space. But that's all for this video. I'm really happy with how the matrix turned out and I can't wait to expand on it for next year. Next year, I definitely want to add more LEDs because although 100 sounds like a lot, it actually isn't. When you get into like mapping designs out and everything, you have to be really cautious of space. And I'd also really love to experiment with bitmaps since both libraries support printing bitmaps into the matrix. And overall, it's just like a really fun project, fairly simple. You just need the lights and Arduino and the code. And then if nothing else, you will certainly ensure that your holidays will be very, very bright. 
And if you like this video, toss me a thumbs up. If you're a Grinch, toss me a thumbs down. Leave all your questions and comments below either way. Uh, find me on all the social media nonsense. Links are down below. I'm also going to be adding in a ton of links in the description for all the various resources I referenced and looked at to kind of get a hang of the libraries and um, and also where to download the libraries and also just different ideas for how to do the matrix. But until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.